So in this second introduction video to MIDI Guitar 3, I want to go over the MIDI controller patch bay, the select patches up and down function. And there's a default uh, assignment to CC14 and 15. MIDI controller latch and invert functions. In MIDI Guitar 2, we had a mix blend function. And I want to show you how to make that here. I'll show you a way to organize patches and plugins. We'll also take a look at the new uh, MIDI output module and there are some great news coming with that. I'll also point out two things that you need to know to get started with Logic and MIDI Guitar 3. With this said, let's go. This is uh, deceptively simple. This is a box where you can find all your connected external MIDI control devices like breath controllers, pedals, whatever you have connected. And of course, these are the connectors. So if you want to connect to any sort of parameter or knob or fader or whatever inside MIDI Guitar 3, you use these. The idea with the whole MIDI Guitar 3 setup is that it should be modular in this way that you are going to create the setup that works best for you. So I can connect any of these to most of the things in the interface. A chain off and on button if I want to, perhaps a fader, to breath control a, a volume for some chain. There are a million ways to connect to this and don't be afraid to use this for more than one function. I can of course use it to turn the chain on and off at the same time as I use it as a fader controller. The thing you should be looking for is these CC numbers that are represented here. So if you have a, an expression pedal that you know sends out CC11, you can set this directly to CC11 here. As soon as you connect this pedal, this will work for that particular pedal. I can use an expression pedal like this, the Bluetooth expression pedal. If I'm not sure what CC is assigned to this pedal, I can always go in, learn CC, use the pedal and it will show what number is assigned. Then we have these two, CC14 and CC15. These are by default connected to the select patch up and down. So you shouldn't use these CC14 and CC15 in the actual patch bay. But why do we want to have anything set by default here? There's certainly an argument for having 14 and 15 assigned to patch up and down because then you can connect a pad like this and just switch patches real fast. But if you don't want to step through them individually and having them load, which could take some time for each and every one of these, just press and have it roll through all the patches on your list instead. Let go and it will stop on the patch that you chose. Another thing that perhaps isn't obvious on the surface, these boxes down here. These are special functions for whatever controller you're using. So I have a spring sustain pedal for my piano, but perhaps I want some other function but still use this pedal. Perhaps I want to step on it and go away and still have this function. Then I go to latch one step and Another step will undo this. So you really don't want a thousand pedals for a few functions. You really want one or two kinds of pedals. And you can set them up like this. Invert. If I'm using the, the traditional sweep from my expression pedal, now it's on. But if I click invert, it is off and has the same function but heal down instead. So you can actually, just by switching it in the software, perhaps saving it to your patch, you can use this invert function and change the functionality of your connected pedal as well. I also have a tip for you regarding uh, the old mix blend function that we had in MIDI Guitar 2. If I want to have one external controller control the relationship between two different instruments or chains in this case, the one with this synth on it and the next one that has nothing on it, I can connect these two like this. The mix blend function on one pedal sweep. After having worked with this a while, you'll start accruing a lot of patches. It's going to get quite unruly and you'll need a way to organize this. I've used a system where I'm creating folders inside of this patch folder 
at the very top here I have something that I've named 001 demo set and the 001 is just to ensure that it's going to be the first thing on the top of this list just so I can work with this demo set setup from here. Inside of this I have another subfolder called first set, another one called second set, a third set. This is the way to do it. Go into the cogwheel, the data folder, the MIDI guitar group. Go into patches, MIDI guitar and in that you have all your MIDI guitar patches. At the very top you see uh, I have this 001 demo set where I have this first set, some patches inside there. You have this second set, this third set here as well. So if I want to put something else in my third set, just copy it and paste it like this. Now I have two patches in this folder and let's go back and see how that looks. I'll go into select patch, demo set, third set and I have this chick patch here. For instruments, I've already done this. These are my ample sound instruments, Cherry Audio, Expressive E and stuff like this. The cogwheel data folder, you end up in this MIDI guitar group folder. Not patches this time, but plugins. And here is a list of all the plugins. I don't need to have everything put into folders. I'm pretty happy with the way it's structured right now. So. If I'm going back, these are the folders and after the folders here comes instruments that I haven't found I had to put in any sort of folders yet. So the next thing is something of a big thing. It's a change to the MIDI out module and this is what it looks like now. Instead of the previous set of buttons we had, you have the strike, pressure and CC74 here. But now you can also send out the modulated version. You also have these four assignable boxes here. So send stuff like a breath controller signal. The idea here is of course to set up so that you have a previously saved patch in MIDI Guitar 3 that connects to whatever instrument you have here. So I'm controlling the Arturia CS80 inside of Logic. I have CC1, I have CC16 from my expression panel. Look at this mod wheel for instance down here. And you can look at this little pan handle here as well. Those are connected to the CC1 and the CC16. I really like the idea of having pre-saved connections like this where I have a subset of controllers involved. So I might have my breath controller, my expression pedal and my sustain pedal in the same kind of MIDI guitar patch like this. So I don't have to do any of these assignments within Logic or within Ableton. A time saver with these assignable four boxes and the possibility of also modulating the MP data. This opens up for so many creative solutions that weren't available from before. While having Logic open, let's go into the two things that you have to look at to get MIDI guitar working to begin with. So you would probably open a new product like this by creating a new audio channel. You go into audio effects and you choose your MIDI Guitar 3 and you're greeted with this message. Your door isn't sending any audio to MIDI Guitar. Enable the guitar input monitoring for the track and this is where you do that. This is the I button here. When you do that you get another black screen telling you that only 44.1 kHz is supported in this beta version and in Logic where you fix that is here you go into file and you go into project settings and you go into audio and you get this little box and here it says sample rate 48 kilohertz put that to 44.1 and off you go this is where you start with mid guitar 3 and logic right now i will be returning with the third part of this introduction series looking into the mpe visualizer that we have Comparing it to how it looks when we employ the MPE visualizer inside of an instrument. There's a difference that's interesting that makes this a most usable tool rather than just a novelty thing in MIDI Guitar 3. So 
I'll also be coming back with a video on setting up contact as a multi 4 MPE input. I hope you got something out of this. I'll see you later and bye.